documented cases of out-of-body experiences flying outside, humans flying outside of their bodies, neuroscientists describes and documented cases, scientific knowledge is expanding every day at an exponential rate, and the implications of new developments, particularly those that challenge the current framework regarding the true nature of reality are far-reaching indeed. One area that continues to become a focal point of study for many physicians and neuroscientists is the relationship between mind, brain, and uh, brain and consciousness. Is the brain a receiver of consciousness, or is consciousness a product of the brain? Although science has not yet shown with absolute certainty that consciousness exists separately from our physical organs, there is a lot of evidence, both anecdotal and scientific, which indicates that consciousness is something completely separate, that it continues on even after we have deceased, and that it is and can be a separate thing from the brain. There seems to be a lot of consistency when it comes to studies that have examined the issue. New findings within the field are rapidly changing how we perceive and relate to the physical world. There's a video of Dr. Bruce Grayson speaking at a conference that was held by the United Nations. He's considered to be one of the fathers of near-death studies. He is Professor Emeritus of Psychiatry and Neurobehavioral Science at the University of Virginia. In the video, he describes documented cases of individuals who were clinically dead, showing no brain activity, but observing everything that was happening to them on the medical table below at the same time. He describes how there have been many instances of this, where individuals are able to describe things that should have been impossible to describe. Another scientific statement by Dr. Grayson posits that this type of study has been discouraged due to their to our tendency to view science as completely materialistic. Seeing is believing, so to speak. In a scientific community, it's unfortunate that just because we can't explain something through materialistic means, it must be instantly discredited. The simple fact that consciousness itself is a non-physical thing is troubling for some scientists to comprehend, and as a result of it being non-material, they believe it cannot be studied by science. More research. Some materialistically inclined scientists and philosophers refuse to acknowledge these phenomena because they are not consistent with their exclusive conception of the world. Rejection of post-material for most post-materialist investigation of nature or refusal to publish strong scientific findings supporting a post-materialist framework are antithetical to the true spirit of scientific inquiry, which is that empirical data must always be adequately dealt with. Data which do not fit favored theories and beliefs cannot be dismissed as priori. Such dismissal is the realm of ideology and not science. Dr. Gary Schwartz, professor of psychology, medicine, neurology, psychiatry, and surgery at the University of Arizona says, in 2001, International Medical Journal, The Lancet, published a 13-year study on near-death experiences. They said, in our results show that medical factors cannot account for the occurrence of near-death experiences and DEs. All patients had a cardiac arrest and were clinically dead with unconsciousness resulting from an insufficient blood supply to the brain. In those circumstances, the EEG, a measure of brain electrical activity, becomes flat. And if CPR is not started within five to 10 minutes, irreparable damage is done to the brain and to the patient, and the, there is death. A total of 344 patients were monitored by the team of researchers, and an astounding 18% of them had some sort of memory from when they were dead or unconscious, no brain activity, and 12%, that's one out of every eight, had a very strong and deep experience. Keep in mind that these experiences have occurred when there is no electrical activity in the brain following cardiac arrest. Another study comes out of the University of Southampton, where scientists found evidence that awareness can continue for at least several minutes after death. In the scientific world, this was thought to be impossible. The study is the world's largest near-death experience study ever published, and it was published in the journal Resuscitation. Quote, in 2008, a large-scale study involving 2,060 patients from 15 hospitals in the United Kingdom, United States, and Australia was launched. The AWARE Awareness During Resuscitation Study 
sponsored by the University of Southampton in the UK, examined the broad range of mental experiences in relation to death. Researchers also tested the validity of conscious experiences using objective markers for the first time in a large study to determine whether claims of awareness compatible with out-of-body experience corresponds with real or hallucinatory events. This type of phenomenon has not only been recorded looking at near-death experiences, but also with studies in the realm of parapsychology. One study in particular that related most to this topic, spanning more than two decades, was conducted by researcher at Stanford University in conjunction with the United States Department of Defense. It was called the Remote Viewing Program. A gentleman by the name of Ingo Swan was able to successfully describe and view a ring around Jupiter, a ring that scientists had no idea existed. This took place precisely before the first ever flyby of Jupiter by NASA's Pioneer 10 spacecraft, which did confirm that the ring did actually exist. These results were published in advance of the ring's discovery. The successful viewing of the, the ring by Ingo came after scientists observed him identify physical objects in hidden envelopes that were placed a few hundred kilometers away. You can read more about that in the remote viewing study, the link here. This type of thing lies within the realm of extended human capabilities and is one example of many that have been documented and observed yet lack a scientific and materialistic framework that provides some sort of theory. Dr. Carl Jung said, I shall not commit to the fashionable stupidity of regarding everything I cannot explain as a fraud. Again, I'd like to stress that the information in the article here is not even a fraction of the total amount of research that's available out there. There is study after study, book after book, and lecture upon lecture, this is simply a very brief and condensed summary of a topic that has been examined for years. If this type of thing, thing sparks our interest, I hope I've provided you with enough information to further your research. I'm going to leave you with the, the video here, the insider's perspective regarding near-death experiences. This is by Arjo Walia on Collective Evolution and Sound Humans Are Free. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.